On this episode, I bring back one from the vault. Uh, it's an interview that I did with a good friend of mine, Samantha Goss, who is a portrait photographer. And in this episode, we discuss her journey, actually getting her work into galleries. And so I figured it would be a good one to share. It's important to me to bring the uh, to bring the original interviews back uh, bit by bit. So I hope you enjoy the interview. This is The Photography Junkie. Hey everyone, this is Jay. This is The Photography Junkie. And today I am joined with Samantha Goss again. Hi, Samantha. Hello. <laughs> So um, it's been a pretty busy week for you, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's been pretty long. <laughs> well, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on the show this week was um, you are uh, you've just come through the the process that a lot of people actually want to go through, and that's actually have your own solo art exp exhibition. Uh, yeah. For some, for someone like me, um, I work in the commercial fine arts stuff. So most of my stuff rarely even sees a gallery. It's it's mostly commission work from different places. So it's always interesting to see the the actual arty side. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think stuff like yours um, would be good for magazines. Like you could definitely blow up in that area. <laughs> Galleries are really odd. <laughs> I'm finding out. So, so you, you've had a um, you've had a, a gallery show before, but that was a, a shared one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've been in a good few, a good many um, group exhibitions, but this is like my actual first solo. All, all mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll just take it back to the group ones. How how did they come about? Um, a lot of it was me researching um, different galleries, trying to find ones that were doing um, like artist calls and really researching the topics they were presenting, basically. <laughs> so one of them was um, Dreams and More. That was the name of it. So I would say my work would fit in more along those lines. So I applied and it's really especially with group shows it's really to make sure that the call for submissions fits your work because um, i think that's a lot of people's mistakes is that they will try to apply for everything <laughs> and then their work doesn't fit so it's really you have to be knowledgeable and really I feel like you kind of have to categorize your own work and make sure you know where it stands in different genres, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, do these things just come up on, on Tinterwebs or do you actively go out and search them and where, whereabouts do you look? Um, if there's an app that would tell me, that would be awesome. <laughs> but I, I go, I just actively look like, um, I go to different states and different cities and stuff and check out their art scenes, um, see what kind of galleries they have. Um, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and I I went downtown one day and looked at all the galleries and most of the galleries here um, are personal owned, like they're private owned. So it's that that artist's work and it's their work only. Like they don't do any kind of shared or anything like that so um it's a lot of that and it's a lot of paintings so my work doesn't fit because <laughs> i don't do paintings and i don't do the touristy type stuff because everyone paints like rainbow row or the um Ravenel bridge so it's really touristy artwork and i don't do that <laughs> so my work does not fit at all here <laughs> but um yeah i just check out other venues and everything and see if my work would fit, you know, uh, go onto their web pages 
read their like about me section they they always have what they're about and typically they want you to visit the gallery and kind of see their past exhibitions but some of them will actually have their past exhibitions on the website so that makes it easier for people out of town um to check out but that's kind of what I do and I've been I actually have been doing that all week so I have a bunch that I wrote down that um <laughs> I will be applying for so these are the ones that you've actually actually visited as opposed to going to the website no um the ones that I just showed you on this piece of paper all of these um I visited the websites so there's some here from like Vermont some from um New York, one in California. It's really just um, trying to find a gallery that fits your work. <laughs> so, because there's some galleries that only accept um, black and white, or they only accept natural, like a straight out of the camera type stuff. They don't want any kind of crazy editing or anything like that. So like so, traditional prints and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have to find contemporary galleries. Those are typically the ones that have been accepting my work. <laughs> so, yeah. So has anyone actually helped you along this along this process? Have you have you found that? Um, with solo with the solo exhibition, has anyone helped me? Um, just in just in general, in in terms of guiding your way forward, or have you literally had to stumble through and and find? <laughs> I had to stumble through. Let me let me just tell you, <laughs> it took me a while to kind of figure out, to kind of figure out what to do, because at first it was a lot of me just emailing <laughs> random galleries that I didn't really research thoroughly, and I wasn't getting responses. <laughs> I was getting ignored so hard, and I didn't really understand how it worked out. So it took me a while to kind of figure it out. Um, there's not um, real good information on the Google <laughs> that helps you along with these things. They give you this list of things not to do, but it never gives you stuff that actually helps out. Like it never, I don't know, at least I couldn't find anything. And I feel like I'm a really good Google researcher. Um. <laughs> well, that's now our job to to give that people, give those people that information. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you know, it's it's no not pressure. that I just uh, <laughs> it's not that I just research stuff either. I actually tried to talk to artists, like really established artists, and you know, I would go on people's websites and email them and ask them, you know, how did you go about doing this and everything. Um, I was never. I never ask them how was it easy or anything like that like I knew it was going to be a lot of hard work um, and it wasn't something that was just handed to me <laughs> um, but I would always get the cold shoulder like no one would email me back or they would give me really crazy answers and be like um, there is no formula to success you just have to blah 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 and I'm like, that's not what I ask. <laughs> but, um, like, I emailed one artist um, not too long ago about um, what portfolio reviews were. Um, I've seen them before and everything, but I didn't really get a good answer with that, so I guess I'm going to have to figure that out myself, too. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, so it's still a learning process for me. I'm still really new to all this kind of stuff, and I'm learning on my own, and it kind of sucks because you don't have anybody to guide you, but... <laughs> so um, with these with these group shows, how does that translate in terms of sales? Has it has it been worth it as yet? Or? Um, I think for me... I'm not too worried about sales right now. And that sounds kind of bad because you want to sell your work, but um, I'm more so just trying to get my resume up, get myself, you know, established. And what am I trying to say? 
um, just to get exposure, to get people to see my work. And that's why I try to go to different um, states and areas outside of where I live, just to get more exposure and um, have my art see a different place. So right now it's just a lot of me building that kind of resume and everything up. So I will have something to present to someone for a solo show. And um, the reason why I got this solo show is because I actually had a group exhibition there a few years ago. Um, so my foot was already kind of in the door. <laughs> and I just talked to them and everything, and they ended up loving my work. So I suppose that's what the this industry is all about. It's all about the, the contacts we make. Yeah, um, I used to be really close-minded about that stuff. Like I didn't want, I didn't want help and I didn't want it to seem like the only reason my art got anywhere was because I knew people, but at the same time, that's kind of how it goes. Like your work won't go anywhere unless you know people and, um, not so much that your work is bad and they're accepting it because they know you, but it's you know people and they kind of guide you if that does that make sense am i making yeah, sense well, here? <laughs> well, to me it's to me it's the case of um you don't just randomly start up a conversation with somebody that you don't know yeah um yeah no i'm not really good at walking up to people <laughs> so just... the same the same applies for me uh take this week for example um i applied for some work or i cast the net out for some work for a local theater which is having an event coming along now i only got my foot in the door because i'd previously shot some break dancers and the the teacher for those break dancers happens to be on on the board of this theater event that's going on which yeah. was my introduction to it now yeah. I'll, I'll get the job but that's on the credit of my of of my work of the quality of my work yeah exactly and but um that introduction is what was needed so that you could actually start the conversation exactly um that's what i was trying to say you just said it in better words <laughs> ah, i just woke up not too long ago sorry but um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I hate to say it's who you know, because it's not exactly all who you know. Like there's definitely a lot of hard work that you have to do personally to get there. Yeah, I don't like, um, at all that it's, you get the job because of somebody else. Yeah, all I they mean, it helps. <laughs> they give you the introduction. You have, mm -hmm. you have to stand on your own feet in terms of getting the job. And there's exactly. nothing wrong with that. Exactly. So, yeah, every time somebody is like, oh, it's all who you know, I'm like, but there's so much you do behind the scenes to get to know that person, to get to do this opportunity, to do this and this. And some people don't understand that. They just think, oh, well, I'm getting nowhere because I don't know this person and this person. And it's like... Well, there's an answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, go out, do the hard work. Like, it's not, it's not easy. Art is really hard. <laughs> it's, it's about build, just building relationships. Yeah, definitely. Whether, and, whether that's a relationship with your customer, whether that's a relationship with the person that's going to hire you or have you in the gallery, it's, yep. it's all relationships. Exactly, and for for artists, that can be kind of hard <laughs> because some of us are uh, little hermit crabs that don't want to get out and socialize. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so when you're when you're applying, um, do you have like a an art kit set ready for? <laughs> Um, exposing. No, usually, usually with um, 
submissions, they on their website still usually have like a submission form. So sometimes it's literally you just have to pay the application fee, which I've only found it to be between 30 and $40 for an application fee. And that's basically just to get um, them to for you to enter your photos and them to review it and stuff. And I mean, sometimes you don't get in there. I mean, I applied at this one gallery. It was like $35 for three images to submit. And I didn't get in for like, I tried four times and I didn't get in. And I got in the fifth time, but um, yeah. Uh, but anyways, so with websites, they usually have like a submission form so you can go in and just kind of tap upload your image and then you can upload the um the the title and everything like that with it um they do have specific guidelines like one one gallery will want you to have it at a certain pixel size and then another one will want you to have it at a different one so you just really have to follow their guidelines and they they give pretty clear and specific guidelines too so so would you say that the the paying for submission is is the norm or um from what i found yeah i mean there there are some who do it for free and that's usually from what i found so far that's usually for the solo exhibitions um if you try to apply for a solo exhibition they want more extensive stuff like they want your resume they want your artist statement they want your biography they want like the whole nine yards. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of different, but what I found so far is, yeah, it's a, there's a submission fee. So, so you get your, you get your acceptance go through on, on the group one. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you have prints ready made or do you print to order for that? No, um, I always enter different images. Like, if I'm going to enter a few different galleries, I always try to make sure I don't enter the same exact image. Um, because if I get accepted into both of them, uh, I, I'm i pretty sure some galleries only want that image to be displayed in their gallery for that duration of time that it's going to be there for the exhibition. Um, so I try to do different images so it, it really just depends on the theme so if one of the themes is like flight um it's going to have images about flight movement and everything but if it's about water i'm not going to enter my flight image into the water one so it's really the theme <laughs> really i just try not to have the same image in more than one so do you have those do you have those printed out beforehand or do you actually just wait until you get an acceptance and then print? Yeah, I usually wait and then print um, because they, they give you a fair amount of time. Usually, from what I've seen, about a month. Um, some of them were out further in the year, so you had like three or four months to get the prints to them and everything. So there's no rush. There's I don't feel like I need to have prints laying everywhere, cluttering up my space <laughs> So when I don't need them. Um, but also I'm finding out that a lot of galleries only want you to, especially for group shows, they only want images up to a 16 by 20 frame. Um, and I'm just finding out that I think I can start sending images in 20 by 20 frames because I do square format. But I don't offer I, I don't offer those sizes in between. <laughs> and so I typically print out like 12 by 12s and mat it myself and ship it to them and they can frame it themselves. They usually have extra frames that they just swap stuff out in every month. Um, so I do that. It's cheaper that way because <laughs> you don't have a giant frame shipping. Um, and it's a little bit safer. You don't have to worry about if any glass is going to break or anything. And then if it doesn't sell, it comes back to you. Um, but yeah, I do tw usually 12 by 12s for those. And I don't sell those. Those are only for like display purposes only. 
Um, and I let them know that ahead of time and they're usually okay with it. <laughs> so, so how does, how does the costing work? Um, for like shipping or for the, for the selling of them, for the ones that you do ship for the, ones oh, that you um, each, what I'm finding out is each gallery is different. Like some will want like 15%, some will want 20% commission. Like if it sells, they want 20% of the selling price, stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's really different for each gallery. <laughs> like there's been some who wants 50 and I'm a little iffy about those because like, I did all the hard work. <laughs> You're just kind of, I don't know. I'm really weird about that. I, I, anything above 50 is a no. Like, definitely don't, because you're ripping yourself off at that point. Um, so I would say a fair, or the common one has been like 40% I've seen, like 30 and 40. But anything above 50, you're ripping yourself off. So it's not worth it at that point. <laughs> so... From a from a business point of view, do you adjust your pricing to accommodate that, or? Um, you know, some places say it's good to. Um, I don't. I probably should, but what I do after each show, after each um, group exhibition or solo show, I raise my prices anyways. So I started them at. Um, cause I offer square formats. So it was like a 10 by 10 and then it goes up to 20, 30, 40 and 50 by fifties. Um, I priced them at that. So it was a 10 by 10 was like a hundred dollars. 20 by 20 was 200 stuff like that. Um, and each show I got, I've raised the prices more and more. Um, but I did a huge price raise <laughs> last month because um, someone made me realize when you're selling your work and you get a custom frame for it, that custom frame is costs more than you're selling your work. And that makes it look bad because <laughs> you're like, oh, here's a hundred dollar print, but a $250 frame. <laughs> so it kind of, people made me realize it's kind of, I'm kind I'm devaluing my work that way in a sense. So what I've done now is... I have that print at, um, let's say a hundred dollars and I added the frame cost to it. So it would be like, I don't know, like $350. Um, but that's still not including the frame. So if anybody bought it, they would still have to buy the frame. Yeah. But at least the frame wouldn't be more than the image itself. <laughs> yeah, I, kind of, I kind of had a, a similar, similar sort of a epiphany with my own work from my photography work because um, originally I set up my my pricing for my for my prints and it was on a certain markup above what it cost me to print it mm -hmm. and the way I initially looked at it and I thought that's quite competitive with people if they want to go and print their iPhone stuff it, they're going to pay for about the same thing but yeah. then then obviously it hit me eventually, and it, this has only been this year that it hit me, <laughs> um, is that the customers are not paying for the print. They're paying for the art that's on the print. Exactly, exactly. So it <laughs> it's a lot of realizing things in <laughs> art. <laughs> like, cause you, you go about, there's okay i feel like there's two types of artists there are those artists who are super humble and they're like oh i do art because i love it and i feel bad for charging so much and it's kind of how i am <laughs> it's bad in a way um and then there's those artists who are like oh i'm i think i'm so good i'm gonna sell this for thirty five thousand dollars <laughs> and you know that's good to have that um self-worth like to know or to you know what I mean <laughs> but um so there's there's two different kinds of artists some need to be brought down some and some need to be uplifted and it's it's really hard to find that balance of you know I know my worth but I'm not ripping people off 
Yeah, but it, there is that there is that point though. Eventually, because as you said, you you increase your prices every every show. Yeah, yeah exactly. Is, assuming that you you carry on with that model, there is that point where you will get to that thirty five thousand. Yeah. See, that's but that's building it up. That's a journey. You can you can always build your prices up, but. You kind of can't bring them back down. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. <laughs> but um, th that's what I'm kind of trying to do is like build myself up. At first, my very first gallery show ever um, was solo ex or not solo. I'm sorry, group exhibition in Houston, Texas, and everyone, everyone was like, "Oh, we should all have our artwork kind of priced the same, this and that." Well, I had a 30 by 30 image. Uh, I had two 30 by 30 images and I priced them for like $1,500 each. And that was, that was kind of a, um, a bold thing for me to do considering that was my first thing. And some people are okay with that. Some people are okay with that, but realistically, I feel like I want to start reasonable and then increase as I val like, Increase in value? Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> building, um, building it up. As, as you build your brand. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, so... For you, for a lot of artists, a lot, the, the hardest thing is to find that starting point. So, for me, my, my starting point when it came to prices was three times cost. Okay, yeah. No, I know a lot of people who do that. Um, I think that's how I had mine set up too. Um, but I decided to keep it kind of an even number to start off with instead of being like, oh, $112.16 or something yeah, like that. You round it up and round it down to, to make the figure look good. But yeah. in, terms of, in terms of a starting point, because you can always go up. Mm hmm. And, it's better to go up than to go down. <laughs> yeah, you need to worry if you're going down. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. That's a really touchy subject because everyone, everyone's worth of their work is different. Like, they, they feel... Some people feel their work is worth more than other people feel their work is worth. So, it's, it's really a game of... But for those for those people oh, yeah. that feel their worth, they're obviously going to ignore the the three times cost thing. And yeah. In with whatever they want, I'm I'm on about the the people that just have no clue where to start, and that is uh, so many artists that I could think of. Yeah, um, you know, I was there like not too long ago, and just what I did was I based it off the print size so like I said 10 by 10 was for 100 and I started it there and that's just kind of what worked for me um I can't really <laughs> that's just kind of what worked for me I don't I don't know any other ways that I can help or tell people <laughs> well the um, the alternative for me that springs to mind would be the Sue Bryce way of doing things of the cost of the print is x amount mm -hmm. regardless of size mm -hmm. and so they they just get to choose the the print size and it's the art that they're paying for not the print you know that's a good that's a good uh view on it <laughs> but um huh so so uh, <laughs> would be the same price as a 20 by 20. Yeah. But that that amount has already been calculated for. Yeah, that's a really good way to look at it. Cause I mean, it's true. They're paying for the artwork. They're not paying for the print. Um, I just personally feel like since you're not being able to see as much detail and everything, and the print size and stuff like that. I don't know. I just kind of like having them at different price points um, because 
if you're getting something smaller, I feel like it should be a little bit cheaper. <laughs> that's that's just me. I don't know. That's a really good way to look at it, though. I never thought of that. People are buying your art, not the print and paper and everything. So <laughs> we aim to please. I may switch. I don't know. That's a good idea. <laughs> I may just uh, make that a permanent switch. That's I love that. Uh, yeah, I think I think obviously you you'd set the limits in terms of the sizes, mm -hmm. but it's just this piece of art for uh, whether it's a limited edition or signed or artist proof. It's just that price, and then they can choose what size they want. Huh, I like that. <laughs> um, I think for me, what um, right now is because I'm still just getting my name out there more and more. Um, if they wanted a print, say I have it set for um, like $100 or something crazy, <laughs> and they wanted a 50 by 50, well, it's going to cost a lot more than $100 to do that. But, um, yeah, I like I like that though. And setting it as one like big price and having them be able to choose. Yeah, because then you it's yeah. you've you placed the value on your art then, haven't you? So Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I was still still toying with the idea myself. Um because I, I still doubt myself and given I don't uh do much in the way of prints, then mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my my clients tend to be more advertising and website work. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really great idea. I mean, I really like that. Um, uh, that one goes to Sue Bryce, unfortunately. I can't claim that one. <laughs> Thanks, girl. <laughs> but no, yeah. Oh wow, that gave me some food for thought for sure. I like that. Um, we are segued a little bit there, so we've gone oh. through the um, gone through the the group galleries, and then you move on to your own solo work. Yes, that that's probably the hardest thing. Oh my goodness! So I mentioned. Um, I was able to get this solo show because I've been in a group exhibition before. Um, and the the thing is, I didn't... <laughs> the thing is, I uh, didn't really have a super tight connection. I only... I, I've only talked to the lady that kind of runs the gallery and everything a few times via email a few years ago and it was just to ask a few simple questions and then afterwards you know i thanked her for taking everybody in because they usually do local artists um they've recently or from my understanding they recently opened up to more out of state and international artists and stuff um but this the show i was in it had everyone had one piece and it was like 52 different artists <laughs> It was crazy, and um, so there was a lot of issues going on because it was a lot of new people. So they were they had all these questions and they didn't understand how certain things worked. So they were kind of giving her a hassle. <laughs> and um, at the end of it all, I was just like, you know, thank you for putting up with everybody. It's not. It couldn't have been easy because she has so much to deal with, because. My solo exhibition is in this huge building. And this building is broken up into different galleries. So it's not just one gallery. There's like eight. <laughs> eight or nine. And it covers this entire space. And they're all different sizes. So there's like a huge one. I got I had the smallest one. Um if it it worked for me. <laughs> but um so yeah, since I knew her and talked to her a little bit, I contacted her maybe a year later. I was like, hey, um, this is me. <laughs> I was in this show. Uh, we briefly talked and everything. And 
um, I just politely ask, you know, how I should go about doing a proposal, basically. And for them, it was a little bit easier than some of these other galleries. Um, some of these other galleries really want super in-depth stuff. And she was really, really, um, they were really laid back. They're, this is probably the best place ever to have a first solo show. <laughs> it seriously was like, I was, uh, a lot of like random stuff happened. Like, um, they sent me a contract to sign. I signed it and then something happened. The how does, how does a contract for that look in terms of the, the general sort of um for this one at least it was basically it was really small it wasn't like a huge like book or anything and for this one it was basically saying you know my my name the title of the exhibition the date so it was like locking in that date um and for this one i had to pay um like wall space so I had the whole room to myself. I basically had to pay rent for it, <laughs> um, which, um, what am I trying to say? Some places, if they ask you to put your work there, but they still want you to pay for the wall space, um, you might want to run. <laughs> like never, if people are asking you to do stuff, you shouldn't have to pay. Like you should, you shouldn't have to pay to be in their gallery if anything they should pay you because they asked <laughs> but um you know since i gave them a proposal and everything i had to pay for that and this is a, a lot of money <laughs> like a lot of time a lot of money a lot of planning but they were really nice um but yeah so for the contract it just says that and it gives you the total amount that you have to pay and basically you're signing like, yes, I want to pay this. Yes, that's my show um, for those dates. I will be there. I will come and pick them up afterwards, all that kind of stuff. So for that one, that's how that kind of looked. Um, so since that's my first one, I'm not really sure about all other guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was it's a process. <laughs> So you get the you get the contract in. What's the next step after that? Um, well, re really, the first main step is having a consistent body of work. So for me, I had a series that I've been working on, and I started that series like two years ago. So this is old work. <laughs> I displayed some old work. Um, so it was like two years old. I specifically created this series um, to get a solo show. That was my whole purpose of it. Um, I was like, okay, I've never worked on a series. I would always get bored. <laughs> and a part of me believed that I had to do a series right then, right there. And it always had to be one after another. Like I couldn't work on other things in between. Um, but I kind of did it different this time, and I, um, I just worked on that series throughout like a year and a half or something. So there are a few images that are a little bit newer, but most of them are like two years old. Um, so really, it's having a consistent body of work, and then the contract, and then after the contract, it's just preparing everything, you know, figuring out what sizes you want in your gallery. Um, how how many ever is in your series how you want to decorate it because you can decorate you can make these really involved um unfortunately time and money constraints did not allow me to decorate this how i wanted um but you can make it you can make it as easy or as hard of a process as possible <laughs> i think i made it a little hard on myself but <laughs> So which bits, which bits do you find, do you think that you actually tripped up over? Um, well, for me, I really wanted to make my solo shows something rememberable. 
and I, I wanted to have like I wanted it to be kind of theatrical like I wanted to have the images the room like the same theme as the images so for this one it was dream tides that was the title of the show and every image is taken on the beach and um, they're they're all different stories um, I try to make my series now kind of have a consistent story in all of them um, but this one was all different stories like just I had one that was about um, a friendship and then I had another one that was about love and then something that was taken from inspiration from somewhere else and it was it was a lot of like different stuff but the consistency of it was that it was like at the beach and you know that kind of stuff um visually consistent <laughs> there we go <laughs> visually consistent um but i really got stuck on wanting to make this space look amazing and i just couldn't do it um, for me, since this was older work, I kind of, I'm more connected to some of my more recent stuff. And when I think beach, I think of like sand <laughs> and I couldn't bring sand in and I wanted sand and seashells and, um, I wanted to have like the driftwood, kind of like the driftwood that's in my photos and stuff there. Um, but if you look online, they're, it's super expensive if you buy driftwood online and we can't take it from the beaches here it's illegal really <laughs> so yeah uh where the driftwood is here it's like it's not i don't know driftwood makes it sound like crap this these are like huge trees like amazing just they're dead <laughs> and they're awesome but they're on like nature preserves. So we can't take anything or we'll get fined and stuff like that. <laughs> so they're trying to save some of the beaches here. Um, but I think the main thing that I got stuck on was just trying to decorate. And I couldn't because it's such a odd thing to try to decorate is a beach theme without making it look like crazy like oh hey take off your flip-flops and go to the beach type <laughs> like that kind of like cheesy stuff so i ended up just leaving it really simple so it's just my work on the walls and nothing else to distract people <laughs> so i suppose one way that you could have done it was maybe have a, a projector pointing down onto the onto the floor if, yeah, it, um, if, it's, a, if it's a white floor you could you could project sand onto that yeah no it was wooden <laughs> it was wood so but yeah that that was the main thing i got hung up on um and it's just really time consuming um people i don't think they realize how much time goes into it especially if you're framing like matting and framing and putting the hanging wire and everything on your own frames if you're doing everything yourself it's going to take some time on your floor yes <laughs> yeah um my knees are still recovering i couldn't find my like volleyball knee pads to wear so my knees are still bruised up and recovering from <laughs> trying to get everything in um so so what do you reckon would be the most the most stressful part of it that you found of of the solo show? Making sure it was presentable in a professional manner. Um, and there's so many things that's wrong with my show. <laughs> like, okay, so if I ordered a frame from a local place which i support local businesses and everything 100 percent. but if i bought one it was going to be like 200 to 300 dollars for a mat and a frame for each image um and realistically i'm starting out and i don't have that money <laughs> so i had to kind of outsource to an online site um and 
I bought like the cruddiest, <laughs> the cruddiest um, frames. They look decent, like they're fine, but um, the longevity of it, probably not. Like they'll probably end up falling apart after a few years. <laughs> um, but I mean, and some of the mats that came in with it were a little bit dirty. Like I had to make sure they were fine. And um, one of them, one of the mats were actually ripped in the corner. <laughs> but I didn't have time to change it. And I think a lot of it is time management. You really have to make a list and get things done on in a timely manner. And for the most part I did, like I had a lot of stuff already done, but then I had to like get everything done at the very last minute too. And that was so stressful. So do you think that would have been helped if you had already had that collection there ready to roll? Well, I, I asked, I got accepted for the solo exhibition last October. So I had plenty of time. Let me just tell you, I had plenty of time to get the stuff printed. <laughs> it was just a matter of life, in all honesty. I mean, we're humans, we have a lot of stuff going on. And I was going through a lot of changes. Like I got, I had a new like full time job. I moved. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of different things happened all at once. So <laughs> Oh, the dogs. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So there was that. But yeah, so it's really doing kind of like a giving yourself due dates and really sticking with them to get this stuff done. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to rush and do everything last minute. And then you start finding little flaws and things. And then you're mad at yourself because you didn't give yourself time. Like I did. I didn't give myself time and I'm mad now. <laughs> I'm so angry. <laughs> well, I know I know when you when you finally got to your your night and I messaged you and I told you to to stop and take it all in. What what was that moment where you actually managed to do that? Um I think I kind of did that the night, the day before, <laughs> after we hung everything up, which by the way, I severely underestimated the hanging process. Um, it does not take like 30 minutes. It does not take an hour. It took us like three hours to get them properly hung and evenly spaced out. It was a lot of math going on in there. <laughs> a lot of math to get these to where they needed to be. But, um, after we got everything set up, I just kind of like looked around and I got really excited. I was super excited. Uh, I wasn't before. <laughs> I guess I was so stressed. I was like, oh, everyone's going to hate it. I hate it. This is old work. Like, why am I even doing this? I want a new series. Like, complaining when I shouldn't have. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was the day before. I was, I just kind of soaked it in and I was like, yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to kind of go through you via the internet of, of that process and the whole sort of mindset that yeah. you're going up to that. Oh, I was so... I was... I was in a bad mood <laughs> for most of it because I was like, ah, oh, this isn't turning out like I wanted or we're not getting there on time. And it's so funny. I'm I'm a person who likes to be on time like I like to be really punctual but um my fiance is not that kind of person and <laughs> so I'm always late for everything everything <laughs> like <laughs> that's something and you know I think that's kind of good in a way it's kind of making me stop being s so uptight about things <laughs> That I don't need to be uptight about. <laughs> so things that you would do differently for the next one. Oh, gosh. Okay. This is a long list. Let me just <laughs> let me just get out this book and tell you. Um, I feel like for a first show, 
going the route of cheaper frames is not a bad idea because for me to get 15 frames it was a small 15 piece show um i got them online i got the cheapest frames i got like this plastic stuff instead of glass i got like this plastic crap it's not it wasn't poly um plexi plexi this one this one starts with the word poly i do believe but um it's a styrene like polystyrene or something um so it's like thinner it's a little bit more flexible it's scratchy the thing, maybe. um no on the site it was listed as styrene like styrene or something it's i don't know it was like their standard that would come with it unless you clicked glass <laughs> but um i would definitely get glass next time let me just tell you uh i thought i was being a little bit more I don't, I don't know. I saved money. I definitely did because adding glass would have added a couple more hundred dollars on, which is fine. But when you're on a budget and everything, you kind of have to do what you got to do. <laughs> but definitely use glass next time because this stuff was kind of like all scratched. It wasn't scratched, but you could see like these really fine lines in it just swirling around everywhere. <laughs> um, so why did you actually... Um choose framed over not framed um because uh, there's, there's some there's some artists that will actually just put the mounts up yeah uh for me i like the traditional matte and frame look um i used to do film photography and everything and i took film photography classes and stuff and i don't know i just like the way it looks it's really clean it looks professional and there's nothing to really distract it so when people look at your work they're getting that frame they to look inside of it so i kind of i just kind of feel like it gives people more of a direction i guess but i mean every artist is different and i just like mine framed and matted i think it looks nice <laughs> But um, yeah, I definitely would get better quality frames. Um, but for your first show, you kind of have to test the waters, figure out what's good and what's not good. And I definitely figured that out. Um, I severely underestimated a lot of things, like definitely the price and the time and the hard work. I mean, I didn't That's think it was really easy. But surprised when they hear how much something like this costs have you totaled it all up yet um for me since i did all the super cheap options the only thing i didn't cheap out on was the prints itself like i made sure i got the quality of prints that i wanted and after i got like these cheapo frames and stuff i felt bad about it i was like oh i'm putting like this good image in like a poopy frame and people people had to talk me talk to me about it and they're like listen people are coming for your work not the frames like as long as they look presentable who cares <laughs> and i kind of look at it that way now i'm kind of like you know what you're right um but i would definitely get glass let me just tell you dog hair hair fuzz dust everything sticks to this stupid plastic stuff and I dusted it so many times. Um, I have this huge, uh, it's not in here, but it's a huge electric duster thing and it's powerful. Like it will blow your contacts out of your eyes. <laughs> um, but I used that and it was fine. And then I come back the next day and they're like dusty all over it. So don't recommend that. But yeah, a lot of people talked me down on feeling bad about the frame situation because <laughs> they don't look bad but anyways um in total depending on the gallery and everything and depending on how large your show is and for me this costed a little over two thousand dollars um and that's because i bought my prints those totaled out to be like 500 for 15 um i got like the really cruddy frame <laughs> those ended up being like 500 dollars 
Um, and then I had to pay for the space and then the gas to get there and then the hotel and everything and parking, all that kind of stuff. So I definitely got away with it being super cheap, but it's not going to be like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm... it's a lot of money regardless of whether yeah. whether you cheap out or not. And a lot of people won't won't realize the sheer, the sheer costs involved of actually having your own show. Yeah, um, I definitely underestimated it. And with the whole framing thing, I went through so many different options. Like I went through the options of me building my own frames, um, going online and uh, getting glass and then cutting the glass down, making my own mats. Like I went through all of that and I couldn't even guarantee that they would come out decent. <laughs> but um, it was going to be the same price as some of these other options. So instead of causing myself even more stress, I just outsourced basically. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't have time. I can't do this. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. And even though I kind of got away with like the cheaper stuff, I would always recommend it. <laughs> At all. But it's good to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot. There's a lot of stuff that I will change for my next show. Um, for this one, I had um, my little cards that directed them to my website and showed a little bit of my images on them. I had a like a, a little book and people would put like their email and their names in it and stuff. So I could keep up with people, you know, thank them after the show. Like, hey, thanks for stopping by. And um, hey, this is my next show if you want to ever come to that kind of stuff. And then I had like a little catalog thing, which was it was a book and it was a it had a clear coat and then it had um, I'm sorry, a clear cover and then it had spiral It was spiral bound. And I got that done at Staples. You can get it done at any kind of like office supply things that have a printing center. Um, but yeah, I just had like my biography, artist statement, and then like the next page had like pricings and other sizes I offered. And then the rest of it was just images, like my some of my other work and stuff like that. Just so people can be like, oh, you know, this is the other stuff if they're more interested, whatever. Um, but I will definitely, next time, wear a name badge. I will specifically print one out for myself. <laughs> Most people wouldn't even think of that. You know, I didn't at all. I didn't... I, I don't know what I was expecting, um, but I noticed some other artists, they had that. I was like, that's a smart idea. Because a person like me, who... <laughs> It's not all that great about walking up to people and being like, hey, I'm so-and-so and whatever. Uh, it, I mean, it's kind of good that I did that. It got me out of my shell and everything. But it's also good for people to come in and instantly know the artist. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, did you do this? It's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, it's almost like walking up to somebody random in a clothes shop and saying, do you work here? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's a good that's a good example. <laughs> so I think next time I'll definitely have that. Um and I'll probably have some like little snacks off to the side or something. Um I've been to a few gallery shows. I have had like little finger sandwiches and stuff like that and uh a few a few people at this gallery have like a bowls of candy. <laughs> so I think I'll I think I'll do stuff like that next time. But it was a huge learning process. I went into this not knowing anything. Like I said, I tried to contact other artists before and kind of got the cold shoulder or they gave me crazy answers that didn't pertain to what I asked. <laughs> so it was a huge learning process and stressful. <laughs> so I guess you're planning your next one now. Oh my gosh. Yes, I... <sighs> since I couldn't decorate this how I wanted to, I was, I was pretty upset about that. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I was pretty upset because I was like, Oh, it just looks plain. Man. <laughs> but 
I really want it to be more involved. I want it to be like a show. Like people come in and they get involved in it more. And just really theatrical. Um, but for my next show, I want it to be my series called In Search of Sleep, which is all about like my s endless sleeping issue. <laughs> endless. But um, so it's going to be more decorated. It's going to be more involved. And now I know what to do and what to have in the gallery and stuff. I don't know. I'm pretty excited for the next one. I already have it planned. I just need to find a gallery to have it at. <laughs> so what, what happens with the work that comes back from this one? Um, are you keeping that to the side? Are you putting it on the walls? Are you keeping it for possible future? Yeah, I mean, I will definitely keep it for future stuff just in case, whatever. Um, but I'll keep it at home and if anybody wants to buy or something you know i have it already ready to go <laughs> but uh i don't know i'll probably end up hanging it on my walls if i have any of that return just to kind of keep them clean and up on the walls and not like hidden away in a damp area or something because <laughs> eventually you can rotate them yeah yeah exactly um i think after this i'm going to keep the frames the frames are not a bad they're not bad frames, but I will definitely be purchasing some glass <laughs> and removing those plastic pieces of junk because oh, I think I think that was the main thing that I learned was y y get glass. Yeah, that <laughs> just they just attracted so much dust and they were so like statically charged like it you could walk by and your hair would be like <laughs> just on the side and oh my gosh definitely so i'm wrapping it up a little bit if you were to give three tips for somebody wanting to set up their own show um three tips oh god we could do five if you want, but I'm, I'm getting you on the spot here. <laughs> um, is it like for setting it up or trying to get a solo exhibition and then setting it up? That kind of stuff. Let's let's do three for getting one and then three for making it practical. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would say number one for trying to get a solo show is do group shows definitely do group shows that will kind of get you in the mindset and pr you get practice of what you need to do and um everything like that especially if you're new and you haven't been in it, in any shows i would definitely suggest doing group shows <laughs> um second would be have a consistent body of work um, I mean, it's good to come in and see artists like different things, but I think a lot of people like, I, I personally just like the flow of having a theme and everything. And a lot of people did at my gallery too. They, they loved the fact that they were all cohesive and went together and told a story and stuff. Um, and let's see. Three, I would say, you know, just build relationships with galleries and gallery owners and, you know, don't make it all about wanting to get into the gallery, like find interest in the people owning the galleries because you want to have a good relationship with them. Like you can't, I don't no, think it will work. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it will work if you guys had some kind of conflict <laughs> like it's not just really get to know the people like be appreciative of their art gallery and come to the shows you know show support and that will kind of help get your foot in and talk to these people and you know all that kind of stuff um, as far as setting up if you're going to go the cheaper route of things don't cheap out on everything <laughs> like glass always use glass like it's heavier to ship um 
but if it's your solo show you're going to want to be there so for me i wanted to be there because you can talk to the people and talk to them about your art and everything especially for opening night so um a lot of group shows, you can just ship the matted print and they'll put it in their own frame so you don't have to worry about it. But um, yeah, definitely don't jip out on the glass. <laughs> um, is that one? That was one. That was one. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, two would probably just make sure you have enough information for people and some takeaways. That's a thing I didn't have was like takeaways. All I had was like a business card type thing. But if you get like a if you print up like little show flyers and stuff, um, people will grab those and take them and show other people and stuff. And so I definitely would suggest having that kind of stuff. Name badges, just making sure you have everything. <laughs> um, and really, the third thing I gotta say is just be really open. Be really open to what you're gonna hear um because your work is up for critique even if you don't want it it's up for critique <laughs> like it is there for everyone to like and dislike and pick apart and you know say oh this is stupid laugh at it everything and i'm used to critique um because i used to do a bunch of like in my photo classes and stuff, we used to put all our stuff on the walls and everyone had to critique it. So I grew thick skin that way. But um, this is another thing why having a like a little name badge would have come in handy because people probably won't make fun of your work in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just tell you, there were a couple of kids that came in. They had, they looked like they were between 17 and 19 area. Um, and they came in and I'm pretty sure they were making fun of everyone's stuff, but they came into my gallery and like went to every image individually and said something really just dumb, but they were laughing about something at every single image, every single one. And I'm just standing here like, <laughs> like I'm standing right next to them while they're saying this stuff and they don't even know. They didn't know I, it was me. They didn't know anything. Um, so I would just really make sure you keep yourself open <laughs> to everything. Um, and I even had some people that knew this was my work and then tell me how I should change stuff. <laughs> like this one guy was like, oh, uh, well, you could have made that shadow more realistic. And I was like, uh, that's not photoshopped. <laughs> It was like the, it was in really flat light. So, you know, and I know you know this, like in really flat light, the shadows aren't huge. They're really close to the placement of things. And he did not believe it at all. <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> but just really be open to critique. I mean, you really have to pull your heart away from your show a little bit. <laughs> and realize that not everyone's going to get it. Not everyone's going to feel the same things that other people will. Um, not everyone's going to connect to same pieces. Um, for me, there's this one image that I thought was the weakest image in the entire show. So I took it and I shoved it in a corner. Like I shoved it as far in the corner as I could out of like all the lights and everything. And that corner was the most viewed corner all night long. Everyone loved that image. And, I, and I'm just over here like, really? Like, I didn't realize people could connect with this image so much. And here I am over here, like throwing it in the corner. How much do you so, think that is down to the image itself and the, your particular placement of it? Um, if, you, if you put something in a hole, the human natural response is to look in the hole. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this was this was definitely in the hole. Like I'm talking about, I had one wall that had eight images, another one had one, but it was next to the eight. 
Another one had a set of two, and this one was like in the corner, like all the way in the corner next to the exit. <laughs> But that was the most viewed corner, like, not because people were exiting, but because people were looking around and they just stood there and they were staring at it and talking over about it. And they asked me about it and everything. And I'm just over here like, See, really? Because you said it's one of the more weaker pieces. To me, yeah. And it says to me that, that putting it in the hole drew the attention to it. I unintentionally did that. <laughs> I was like, I want this in the dark corner where no one will look at it. And that did not work out. Um, but, you know, that taught me a lot because how I view my work is a lot different than how other people views it. Like, look at it. I, for me personally, I look more into the technicality of it and the story, like the deep story of it. And... For me, this image, I don't know. It was, I was like, oh, it's all right. From a technical standpoint, for me. But everyone loved it. Everyone. And I'm just like, what in the world is happening here? <laughs> it would have been would have been interesting to say halfway through, swap the images over. I know. I know. I probably should have done that. A, say on, on what, the next day or something. Yeah. It's just swap two over and see if that corner is still getting the same attention because then yeah. you learn more about the the psychological side of the lighting of it and exactly so because then replicate that across all the others in futures yeah that's a good idea um i didn't even think of <laughs> i was just like why are people looking at this i don't get it i mean uh... Uh, it's like the weakest image in the series or uh, okay i can't say it's the weakest there was another one that was i feel like really bad but i don't it, know it's not the light that shines on something that causes the attention it's the shadows i mean that's probably definitely the reason why because this was in a dark corner like it, but i feel like a lot of people were drawn to it too because i had a really strong like image right next to it so people, it, it was just so weird because people loved these set of three images that were right next to it. Out of like all the other ones that I put out that I thought was amazing, these people loved these three images that I thought were like my weakest ones. And I'm just like, it just goes to show you how open art is to interpretation and how people connect to different things. So where I connected to something completely different everyone liked something else so it's really you just got to make sure you keep your mind open and don't shove your stuff in a corner <laughs> <laughs> or maybe do shove your stuff in the corner maybe do or just put a price tag on the ones in the corner yeah i mean like i said it was a huge learning process and i definitely have tons of notes of what i will change tons of notes what i will um do different or add and it, it's it's definitely and I I know what I'm getting myself into budget wise, <laughs> price wise, time wise. Um, it's it's a long process and you have to be ready for it. And I was I was like in the middle. I was semi ready for it because I was like, oh, I know what it's gonna take. And then I get it, and it's like <laughs> it's kind of like those pictures with the iceberg, but then there's like the whole entire thing underneath the ocean that's exactly how it was it's like oh this is what you see and this is what i thought it was going to be yeah it was like all this stuff underneath <laughs> so yeah it's it was a long learning process and very valuable <laughs> so well I don't know. That's, that's gonna take us to the end of the podcast uh, where can people find you so they can check out your work? Yeah, um, I have a website, which is just sleepingawakephoto.com. Um, and then I have a, I do have a YouTube, but that is youtube.com slash C slash sleepingawake 
<laughs> sleeping awake photo as well. And then I have a Facebook page, which is just Samantha Goss photo dot com i made that way before anything else so i just left it <laughs> <laughs> but like everything that. can be got through your through your main website yeah definitely um yeah if you go on there there's links to other social media things so um so yeah hopefully this helped people out i rambled on a lot <laughs> i usually don't <laughs> <laughs> It, it's just honestly it's it's a lot to process i mean going from nothing to having this in, or not nothing but going from a group show where there's all these amazing artists and you're just one little piece in the show to having an entire show to yourself and all the people coming in and talking about it and talking to you it's it's so like it's been two days and my head's still like confused i can't even it's hard to put everything into words it really is besides it's stressful time consuming and a money eater <laughs> so but in the it's end ultimately rewarding yeah in the end it's like i did this yay <laughs> so but so uh, that's gonna be a, a thank you from me um obviously you can photographyjunkie.com if you're watching on YouTube don't forget to hit subscribe leave comments below I will answer them and uh, that'll be me signing out